everybody. Welcome to Zine Cuisine. First off, I just want to say a big hearty thank you. We love you to everybody who's subscribed so far. I think we're just under 50. Um, if we get to 100, I can change the insipid youtube.com slash a bunch of letters and numbers and gobbledygook into something cohesive like i don't know zine cuisine channel so tell your friends tell your enemies tell your cohorts and co-workers to check it out subscribe like this video woo, hit the little bell so you can get ring a ding ding and be told when the next menu of tasty zines has arrived anyway so we're going to be doing a couple of uh, zine reviews this week. I'm doing Jay Morris today, and I want to do, I'm um, probably going to be doing Milk and Honey comics on Thursday, so look for that upload as well. Uh, these are two people who are also friends, and um, Milk and Honey is collaborator because we've actually written and illustrated, David and I. A story that was in the last Milk and Honey, the last, last one. Our friend Steven's in this last one, so that's really cool. And it is a serial out of uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, so look forward to that one. But today is Jay Morris. We'll be doing some mini interviews and a little zip through noise, a little fun, fast paced with some probably wacky music that's free to put on because that's what we do. And, um, you know, get to meet some other zinesters. We will hopefully get a nice little stash hoard that I'll be able to share beginning of next week so you can see all the goodies. I am so excited for Noise. It's a great show. Uh, if you're in the Norfolk area this Saturday, November 1st, please, please make some time. I believe it starts at noon. Be there or but if you're square, that's cool too. But just go and get some zines because you love us and you're really into zines. Anyway, so today we are talking about Jay Morris and this is one we have in our backlog of awesome zine collection, which we kind of have a few. Um, Delora. Delora is a... An, based on a Virginia urban legend. Um, it is so cool. I really dig the way Jay Morris used his black, white ink washes and all that in this comic. Um, it is a square format, so you know how much I'm a sucker I am for square format. So that's nice. And um, I believe you'll have a few issues at the show. I hope so. That'd be really cool if you guys can get one too. If not, maybe we can convince them to do another run because this is brilliant. It is spooky. It's that kind of ghost story chills up your spine. Oh my goodness, it's an urban legend. Did this actually happen? How did it happen? Is this going to happen to me? <sighs> anyway. So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and uh, set up so we can look at the zine. So, this is Delora, an urban legend. Um, this is one of Jay Morris's books that I think we do have. I'm not sure if we have any else, but um, it's very beautiful. His use of ink wash, um, the whole black and white, really lends to the overall spookiness of the story. Um... It's based in what looks like the 20s, that whole era, uh, in Virginia, because Dunlora Mansion is in, was in, um, I don't think the mansion's around anymore, but Dunlora Mansion grounds are in Charlottesville, Virginia area, so um, something you should totally look up the history of. This whole story might actually kind of pop up there. I love the artist's use of black as a border, as opposed to white with the comic, um, mainly because I think it lends to the foreboding nature of the overall story. And I just have one thing to say. If you see a plant like this when you're hiking, that's a danger plant. That is going to hurt you. I mean, we have plenty of 
stories and videos and all this stuff of movies even of plants that are literally going to hurt you this is one of them watch out i mean it might not be a dangerous plant but i mean it looks like something from mario and that might hurt you okay anyway so going on um you know it's a good scout story if you're a boy scout this would be a really good cross collectible of what not to do when you go um camping and hiking um because <laughs> if you hear some scratching on your tent be quiet and don't leave your tent keep that little sucker zipped up and tied up do not leave because you know what's gonna happen <laughs> We already know. We already know where this is going. Um, if anybody's seen uh, <laughs> Blair Witch Project, we know that camping and tents and strange noises with sticks outside of tents <laughs> means imminent death. So <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now without ruining the story because we're going to skip. I don't want to give away the, the last few pages. They're just the same thing that got me like, ah, oh my goodness. Um... So I'm going to skip these next few pages and I'm going to pick one little thing for you to kind of see as like a spoiler. That's all. That's all I'm going to show you. Because if I show you more than that, you're going to miss the whole feel of it. And um, it's really Artists, good. Um, gives a nice little epilogue at the end um, with the whole story. So I'm going to go ahead and just read this to you because it is it's so great i mean i just love it epilogue legend has it concerned parents contacted authorities when the boys didn't return home on sunday the scout leader was found in a state of delirium he was rambling about a house and a witch confused the officers quickly began searching for the campsite there they found each of the boys mutilated bodies lying atop their sleeping bags the troop leader would later be committed to asylum. Living out his days, babbling incoherently about the witch, the boys, and the house. One month after the tragedy, seven twisted and gnarled trees appeared on the property, seemingly out of nowhere. They are believed to contain the souls of the six scouts and their leader. Did the group stumble upon a dark, vengeful force? Or is this legend the creation of a tormented, murderous mind? Be cautious when wandering on lands unfamiliar. You never know what you'll find. Or what will find you. So spooky and fun. I love it. So that is um, Legend of Delora. It is a nice, perfect shape. Because we all know how much of a sucker I am for square shape. Um, if you need to contact me. You know, that's one of my biggest pet peeves with a lot of artists. That don't put their social media and ways to contact this guy does it right here so he doesn't put Delora and urban legend by you know i don't think you really need it i think it just kind of brought you right into the story and you're like you're not thinking about who wrote this this is a timeless tale uh this is a spooky stories to tell in the dark you know and if you're from virginia this is one of those like woo. okay i totally love it um he puts everything in the back though so you'll know like exactly who did it please go at create underscore m-o-r-r -R on instagram create more at gmail.com if you want to get a hold of him uh he will be this Saturday, he'll be there at um, Noise, so you'll get a chance to meet him. Um, I'm gonna be picking up some more of him, more get it, uh, bad pun. I know I'm gonna pick up some more of his stuff so we have it. Um, because honestly, the guy works a full time job just like most of us do, he works a full time job and he also makes stuff so. The fact that he has time to do something this gorgeous, I know it probably took a long time. So I super appreciate it because our time is 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes. And some of us before or after work just so we can get some stuff done late nights. So I super appreciate anybody who can do that. Um, again... Thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and give this a PG-13 
kind of rating, I think that PG-13 is a great way to put that out there. Um, mainly because the gore factor. I wouldn't say R, there's no language, there's no real thematic, but there's some trigger warnings of um, some guts and murder. So um, I, I just want you to know that before you go and, and you read the back and you're like, ah, I'm shocked, or I don't want to freak anybody out, or, you know, cause a panic. So um, here you go. Get it. Hey again. So I just want to say... If you are going to be in the Norfolk area, please stop by Noise at O'Connor Brewing. It's going to be a great show this Saturday, which is going to be February 1st, 2020. We're going to be upstairs next to Stephen Kissel and uh, Milk and Honey Comics. So if you want to pop by, we're going to have a lot of really cool stuff at the table. Little flyers for Zine Cuisine. And I have zines on there and art. Um, anything I sell is, the money is going to get funneled back into Zine Cuisine. Uh, so please buy some zines. I have some really cool things on there. Um, we haven't started a Patreon yet, but we're working on that so we can get support from viewers like you. I've always wanted to say that. I've never gotten to work for PBS, but I've always wanted to say that. It's like a dream come true. Anyway, if you really want to help us, go ahead, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, get a little notifications. It really helps us out. Tell your friends, tell everybody. Um, you can also hit us up on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, look up Zine Cuisine, and it should generally pop up with the same logo that we have on the channel. So, double trouble, bonus, awesome. Thanks again for watching, and bon appetit. See you on Thursday with Milk and Honey Review, and this Saturday with some fun feeds from Noise. are for you and me. Thank <laughs> you.